the ping pong ball will get launched to a great height. Well, a maximum height can be reach up to two meters of water. And today, our focus is investiga investigating the relevant parameters and maximizing the height. So first, we'll start with an introduction of these ball and water systems. So these are the, um, these are the, the, the radius of the ping pong ball, contact angle, and the height of the ping pong ball underwater. So we're, we'll start with the phenomenon. As the container descends to the ground, an immediate pressure is exerted to the water due to the reaction force. Then the pressure compresses the water, and it, in, which is influenced by the compression ratio. And the compression ratio changes with the temperature and pressure. And next, the com compression initiates an acoustic wave. And this acoustic wave is transferred to a ping pong ball, which shunts the ping pong ball into a great height. So, um, before explaining our theory, I'm going to talk about why we didn't use the Washington jet, which is mostly used to, this, to explain this phenomenon. It is because when using the Washington jet model, the ball actually has to sink into the water then be pushed up. But when we are observing the, our experiment, we found out that the ball didn't actually sink into the water. It was launched before it sink in. So now I'll talk about our theory. So we think that the launch ball is affected by the equilibrium between the gravitational force 
surface tension and the buoyancy. And since the volume of the ball underwater is as shown above, we can calculate the value of H with the equation below. And then we can get the work by integrating the force. And we can get the velocity caused by buoyancy force. Then we derive the velocity of the ping pong ball. Then we first investigate the pressure that compresses the fluid. And this is the um, this is the pressure we get, which is F. Um, oh wait, no. Uh, we use the F to calculate the pressure on the next page. Um, and <coughs> here we get the compression ratio for the trough. Then by applying the ball modulus equation, which is shown as below, we can find the acoustic pressure. And we calculate the through the wave equation to prove that the speed of the acoustic wave is fast enough to reach the ping pong ball before it launches. Then we add the Newton's second law and plug the solution into our previous equation eight. And then we get the coefficient of the equation to be a square root of the propagation speed. Then we can get the acoustic wave energy, as shown as below. And we only use the potential energy since after the, the container bounces off the floor, the ball has already, already launched. So the kinetic energy caused by the container wouldn't be transferred to the ball. So that would be zero. Then, given by, um, yeah, uh, as I just said, the kinetic energy will be zero, and to, com to conclude, we can get the velocity as the formula shown below. And we'll be using this to calculate the theoretical value of the velocity later on. And this is our experience set setup. So, we only use a few equipment, high speed camera, ping pong, and a container with two liters of water. And for the experiment, we hang the container on the ceiling. Then we cut the, the string that hangs the container to observe the uh, ejection of the ping pong ball. And these are the rhythm parameters, which is the height of the dropping bucket surfactant, amount of water in a container, surface area, different shape, and temperature. So the first mm -hmm. experiment is the surfactant. So the surfactant decreases the effect of surface tension. However, um, the, value, the value of velocity after and before we act surfactant is about the same. So we can conclude that the surface tension doesn't have much effect on the velocity of the ping pong. And in experiment two, um, we can see that as the velocity increases, the pressure imposed on the water increases, and therefore the com compression ratio of the water can be seen as the, uh, the equation uh, given on the beam. And then we can see that the decrease of, so, then we, have, we did an experiment on the surface area of the container. And we can see that the decrease of surface area caused the compression ratio to decrease. And from the experiment result, it aligns with our theoretical value. Then we did the amount of water into in the container, which is one liter and two liter. And with the largest volume, it causes an increase of a constant wave energy. And these also align with our theoretical value. Then, we validate a theory by com comparing the container shape with the same surface area. So in the data, it shows the two velocity with the same surface area, but we, with a, a 
cir circle and a square container. And we can see that the velocity value of the two shape container is about the same, which shows that the shape doesn't really affect the velocity of the water as long as the surface area is about the same. Next, we did an experiment on the different temperature of the water. Because as I said in um, the introduction, the temperature affects the curve of the compression ratio. So throughout the whole system, the compre compression ratio changes. And from the result, we can see that the increase of temperature affects the velocity. So as the temperature increases, the velocity increases because the compression ratio is larger. So yes, we have to op optimize the velocity, which is as the prompt says. So we found out that the velocity of the launching ping pong ball is pos positively related to the surface area. So with the smaller surface area, we'll get the higher velocity. And to optimize the velocity, we use our equation to minimize the area to 0 0.001254 uh, square meters. And to, we increase the height of the container to 1,592. And then we can get the theoretical velocity for the 1.5 meter container, which is uh, 128 meters per second. But this value cannot actually be um, reached in the real world, which means that this is all theoretical. And we haven't conducted an experiment on it because it is too difficult to reach this state. So according to our theory, uh, the velocity of the ball would be the formula we derived. And if we ignore the air, if we ignore the air resistance in the process, the height will be uh, as shown on the slide. So to conclude, as the initial height of the container rises, the collision velocity increase, increases, resulting to a ping pong ball sinking deeper into the water. And when the surface area of the container decreases, the shear stress intensifies, allowing the ping pong ball to achieve a greater altitude. And the presence of the surfactant leads to a slight increase in velocity due to a re reduction of surface tension which has little effect on the final velocity of the launch panel. Thank you.
Did you, did you have used? So it's actually all oh, related. With Greater Milwaukee. So is this a linear line or? Well, it, it is a linear line. Well, why? Because there is velocity and there is height. Right? Why should it just be there? Well, with. Can you explain we, it with your theory? So when we drop the container at the larger height. Okay, we, so, so you didn't consider the, what we can get if this. Yes, as, as I said in so the beginning. So you use of, opposed to it and we turn to your observation. to measure the maximum height that you can get when you jump to two meters of water. The outline of the report is a problem statement, and they did many theories, to, and they made an experiment set up to explain the phenomenon and the theory. Well, let's summarize the report. The report considers the compression of water, which forms an opposite weight, which they think is the main cause of the inton ball launching in their experiment, and calculates the theoretical velocity through their theory. And they did several experiments with different variables like surface tension, height, surface area, the container shape, and temperature to try to prove their theory correct. Well, the report has some strengths like the consideration of major theories and thus plenty of variables to explain the theory. Well, also lacks consideration of the ball release mechanism. I still don't know how they release the ball so that they can increase the human error and instability of their experiment. And the vertical bounds of 
the ball is also not considered in the theory. Meaning that there might be a horizontal component in notch. Also, the energy loss is not also energy loss is not considered in the theory, like the various forces in play. And the graph correlation between theory and experiment is pretty weak. Okay, thank you. We can begin our discussion. Okay, so you change the units here, and it's actually 1,592 centimeters. So why do you choose this height? Is there any reason? Uh, we chose this height because it would be easier to understand. Because um, we actually have to change the levels. I know, I know we need to minimize the area, right? Yes. And could this be any smaller? And if it is smaller, you what do you the think? Area? Yes. Surface area. What do you think will change the experimental results? Well, will the bounce height be bigger or smaller? Well, the bounce height would be, well, there wouldn't be a bounce height because the surface area that we chose is the area that the ping pong ball can stay on the container. So, with so the container the cannot be smaller than Yes, uh, yes. Uh, the surface area is smaller. So why, why do you choose this height when you have the area of minimized? And why do you choose this height? Can it be any higher? Um, well, it, it can't. Because with the higher height of the container, you can get a higher velocity. However, there is a fixed water value in the container. So the height and the area would, when, when it's it's some would add up to the uh, amount of water that is stayed well, when in you're, the you're, bubble. Well, when it is released from a higher height, oh. well, do you think that there is more energy in a container or not? Mm, I think to a certain uh, <coughs> to a certain point, the when the compression ratio cannot be any greater, uh, the height will be the same. But so it will be, there will be a convergence of the height when the mass increases, or the height of the container <coughs> mass increases. Oh, can you repeat? I mean, there might be three times the energy of the Meaning if the release height increases, there might be a convergence of the bounce height. So, and when the uh, mass increases, I mean the volume of the water increases, there will be also be a convergence as well. Is that what? Uh, yes, but in the problem it limits us to use two meters of water. So, we didn't use sure. so, so, when you have, so where, where, if you have two meters of water, where, where is it in this graph? I mean, if you, if you want to increase the mass, where, where do you think it's So what you're saying is when there is 
So the convergence here is caused by energy loss. Meaning that if we have a higher release time here, it's, um, it's more energy. And if the bounce height doesn't change, it indicates a higher energy loss rate. Is that what you're saying? No, uh, let me repeat your question. So you're asking about why there is a convergence in, at the top of the conversion ratio. I'm not talking about pressure ratio. I'm talking about your why you assume that 1,592 centimeters it will have the highest bounce height. And I'm asking if we increase the release height, will it indicate the higher bounce height or not? Uh, okay, so because uh, you have just uh, well, well, you have just stated earlier that when we increase the release height, the velocity, and, and you said that is a linear line. Although I think it isn't. Oh, well, when you have a higher height, there is a bigger velocity. Well, it means that because this is a theoretical value, and in our in our experiment, we haven't reached that value. Uh, is that our memory is actually very small. So, 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 this so where do you it is a linear, but when it reaches a much higher value, and we uh, you think it is somewhere like here? Yes. And it will be um, somewhere like this. Somewhere like here, and it's very short. So it looks like it's like harder. If we, if we do it much more expression, it will find the yes convergence. Right? But it's a zero theoretical value, so it is very difficult to reach. Okay, so. So this is a theoretical assumption that yes, you can find it through your external results and you can find the number of these through it. Okay, okay. okay, I will go on to take a look at the observation. Okay, from this video we can see that here is some water being spilled out of the without a container. Have you ever considered that um, in your theory? Well, actually, we thought about this. It's because that the ping pong ball is launched before the water uh, spill out of the container. So uh, we think that it doesn't have an effect on the velocity of the ping pong ball. So you, what you're indicating is that, so you have made your entire experiment on assumptions of acoustic quits. Yes. So what you're saying is that the waves are so big that the water might just spill out of the container. Um, no, actually the acoustic wave didn't cause the water to spill out the, of the container. What caused the water to spill out of the container? And have you considered why does this also cause the ping pong to spill out of the container? Uh, well? well, the uh, reaction force caused the water to spill out of the container. The reaction force is the force that the so, so, you, so what you're saying is the water spills out because of, of the force that you just mentioned. Yes. And the ping pong spill, spills out because of another reason. Well, uh, as I reported, the uh, reaction force caused the compression of water. And the compression of the water caused a positive, a positive weight. So, actually, so, so what, you're talking, what, you're, what you're talking about is the compression of water. So when the water is compressed, why does it needs to spill out? Up? Is it because it is compressed and has the potential energy and needs to spill out of how to release the energy? Um, well, it's because when it's compressed, it creates an acoustic wave. So, so the acoustic wave is the main reason that the water is spilling out of the cup, or not? It is. But, so if you want to put it this way, the reaction force caused the compression that leads to the acoustic wave. So, they are all forces that cause the uh, ping pong ball to eject. But uh, in indirect, the only direct force is the uh, as positive. So, so how does the wave interact with the ball, essentially? Can you try out? Well, when you increase the height, will 
of this can this be independent because when there is more velocity here, it is a possibility that this point may reach and not what your theoretical assumptions. So when you increase the height to this bit, are you sure that your theory still works? Yes, because um, the weight actually comes from all areas of the No, no, I, 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 I mean, this is what you think will happen when the uh, compression weight happens, right? Yes. Well, if there is a density, there is a possibility that the ball might sink under the green like an air cavity right here. And when a, the, the height is increased to this magnitude, this may happen, which will make your theory wrong. And, and oh. so, I mean, you can't predict the really predict the emergency. And when the height is about this magnitude, we're using a surface area that is as small as a point. So, there wouldn't even be. Or, or there still might be something like, like this. Well, now, the air cavity will happen, and then it's the well, area is so small. It will look something like this. Uh, uh, it will be so, so small that there is only one point holding the paper. So you think of that. So you think that this experiment will result in uh, maximum height that the proper state? Yes. But oh. as I said, it's theoretical. So it's almost impossible to reach in the room. However, it's the best. Uh, Best surface area and height to reach the maximum. Okay, so when you talk about the different, you have the different shapes of a container for example. Yes. So when the shape of a container is like a rectangle or like a circle, and you have a ping pong ball right here, how does the weight interact with different shapes? Can you draw out ping pong? So the waves come comes from the different of the membrane of the so it would look oh, it would look something like this. Then it's impossible that the circle and its weight might be more concentrated, meaning indicating a higher height. Is there oh, a so if the ball if the ball is concentrated in the the reporter has talked about a lot about their theory, like the compression of water, which causes an acoustic weight. Well, I have, I have asked about when the maximum of height will happen, and whether there will be a convergence of gas height when the, when the release height increases, when the mass increases. We also took some time to discuss how the ping pong interacts with the water. And I think that when the height is big enough, the water may get into the, the ping pong may get into the water like this, forming an air cavity, which will make their very assumptions incorrect. However, the opponent pointed out that their simulation was something like a lollipop. Well, in the real world, we cannot really assume something like this. Then at last, we talked about how the acoustic waves interact with the ball and show that different shapes may have different concentrations. Thank you. You need a raise question, So, uh, so I want to ask the reporter. So, can you explain more about the physics process behind the uh, jet that sends the ball out? Um, so, Reaction force that the water gives to the container creates the water compression, which leads to the acoustic wave. So where exactly is the force? Which force? Uh, so the force that makes the bubble. Um, well, it's the well. There's no jet, first of all. In your question, there's there's no jet that launches the ball. It's the acoustic wave that comes from the uh, side of the container. That is caused by the compression of water. So what is it? Well, as you can see, that the water spills out. I think it's a Worthington jet caused by the surface tension. Right. So do you think that Worthington jet needs to be applied in this experiment? But it needs to be applied. Well, I think the air cavity should be considered a Worthington jet. Well, they may, may not necessarily use the Worthington jet here. 
different, but we should at least consider the air cavity that might be possible. So, what does it mean? So, um, as I said, we're, we're not using the model of Washington jet because we found out that in order to use it, the object has to actually sink into water and be launched by the water jet. However, in our observation, we found out that the ping pong ball is launched before there's even a jet happening, and it, it then sink into the water. Got it. So uh, in your uh, previous discussion, you mentioned that uh, uh, you didn't control the ping pong ball in the middle, right? Oh, we did. You did? Oh, so, so there's, there how would it affect the phenomenon if you didn't control it in the middle? So uh, there would be a wave shift. So uh, the wave won't uh, reach the ball all at the same time. So the energy would be reduced. The uh, energy uh, transmitted to the ball would be reduced. So I mentioned, the, so what does the opponent think about the reports? That I think the ball should be placed at the center of the table. Okay. So, um, can you please turn to um, page 3? So, what if the height of the container is more than uh, 1,592 uh, centimeters? Well, it would stay the same because the compression of the water has reached its maximum. So, it won't change after. Uh, it won't change. Uh, what? Uh, the compression of the water, compression ratio. Right. So, well, we're going to fill the air cavity is the center. No. Hands up. Do you think that it is going to be and she changes the surface area and shapes up 
it's differentiated by the same area. Uh, so, uh, in the setup, she hangs the container on the uh, ceilings, so uh, and so that it falls into the ground. And the results are uh, it's effective decrease the jump side. So, and also the inertial height when the inertial height increases, the velocity, velocity also increases, and when the and the increases of temperature affect the velocity, and also when the area decreases, the velocity will also decreases. So the optimizing result is that when the area, the area it will decrease the area to 0 0.00126 and the initial height will be uh, 1,592 centimeters and the theory velocity will be uh, 180, 128.6. All right, so this, I think the reporter has a good qualitative phenomena explanation and simple physics explanation and she had a qualitative understanding and a conceptual clarification. And you guys have clear explanations for experimental results, and also she didn't control the angle well, and also the lack of comparison between the theory and the experiment data on the chart. Uh, I think uh, in a theory a summary of component, I think the unit he uses the unit of temperature, and he suggests to use K and the conversion of water and vertical bounce and energy lost. And the experiment they talk about the mechanics of um, releasing the ball. And this, I think he has verified some experimental graph and point out some problems of the leasing, leasing setup, and he asks about some of, the, some of the comparison between the theory and the experiment result. And I think he can discuss more about the detailed physics behind the phenomenon. So the opponent asks how does the acoustic wave interact with the ball, and the, and the recorder says that acoustic wave is affected by the compression pressure, and I think that the acoustic wave didn't affect that much of the phenomenon. So the opponent also asks why does the velocity is linear to the initial height? And the reporter said that our experiment data is, is inadequate, and I think that reporters should do more experiment about that. Right. And <coughs> so I asked, do you think that working can gently to be considered? And the opponent asked uh, the reporter, uh, the reporter should consider it. And the, the, report, uh, the opponent said that the reporter should consider it, and the reporter said that the ball doesn't sink, so it doesn't affect. But I think that actually the Worthington jet is created by the air bubble that is created during the falling process, and so it doesn't really uh, match to the both of their port. And so the, the reverse, uh, and I also asked, can you clarify about the mechanism behind the phenomenon, and where is the force and why? So the reporter said that it's from the acoustic wave, and the opponent said that, that they should consider the Worthington jet. And so <clears throat> I think that when the container touches the ground, the ping pong ball pushes the water. And then the water rebounds from the edge of the container, and it also creates a jet. So that's the, uh, that, that's the physics behind the, uh, behind the, the phenomenon. And thank you. Okay. And I do agree that we need to do more experiments so we can see that the relationship between it is not a linear line. And the velocity and the height are in a positive correlation. And next, the maximum height leads to a small surface area, which I must clarify, is that the container height is not the height that the container is dropped. It's the actual height of the container. And next, the different shapes of the container cause different wave direction, but from our experiment, there isn't much effect to the velocity and the final height. And the reaction force, as in my report, leads to compression of water and leads to the acoustic wave that is transmitted uh, from the side of the container. And the air cavity area that they said might be wrong when using our theoretical model. And Washington Jet, as I said before, many times we didn't consider because the ball didn't sink into the water. And uh, yeah, as I just clarified, the height of the container is not the height it is drawn. And I want to talk about our graph is that we do compare our theoretical value to our exper experimental value, and it matches. Thank you. Okay, now, Mr. Preston, from the two. Yeah, from my profession, uh, for all of you, I'll talk to the opponent. 
that are very interesting, uh, are led to parameters are linear or not. So do you know how to test whether the relationship between two parameters is linear or what to does it contain the higher uh, high order than for example the how to test? Oh, sorry, first I just misunderstood this graph. I don't know that the edge is actually the height of the graph. But if it is the drop, drop no, no, I mean two parameters are they linear or not? Well, it's simple, simple question, not a lot of Okay. Perfect. I mean, they can use the, the powers of the variables in the theory to try to draw a graph that is according to the Okay, so how about you? Do you have an answer to this question? How to check whether two of the two parameters in your data are linear or not? So we would draw a combine. But in our experiment, due to the lack of the amount of time we did our experiment, the timeline of the graph would be linear. However, if we do more experiment that our data can reach the, the graph on the board, we can see an experiment. I are they linear or not? You just chart, uh, judge it by eyes, or do we have any way to test whether it is linear or not? Oh, yes, we can draw a trend using, oh. using the example for other drawing uh, Okay, just to clarify. Okay, so I think that they can put, they can put it into a graph and draw, draw a line, draw a trend line uh, to also calculate it, maybe for the, the theory, uh, maybe compare it to the theoretical value. So, Actually mentioned. Okay. Any more questions coming to you? Yes, please. Okay, so uh, for all of you, which part in the reporter's uh, result shows a convergence? Which part in the reporter's result that shows a convergence? Can you show any of your slides for the equations? Well, and explain quickly where, which part will show you the conversion. Well, I think uh, the... I'm asking you, I'm the... Well, there's actually no graph of, that shows a conversion. No, 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 which part of the bits there's a conversion? Uh, no, because it reaches a maximum height. Which, no, no, which part in your presentation shows there's a conversion? Last part of my slide, it talks about the best condition for the maximum height, which means that well, after in your equations, where is the one that shows conversion of Can you point to me where it shows conversion? Um, so this this part down here is mostly about the conversion equation. However, which one? Which parameter will lead to the convergence? Um, yes, the, this part. This part. Because which, which parameter will lead to the convergence? The conversion ratio. Because after where, where is that? Where is that? Which is which symbol is convergence? Uh, yes, the the compression. Which, is, which one is the compression ratio? Uh, this one is the uh, constant of the compression ratio. And no, no, it's compression ratio. We can get the compression ratio. Okay, uh, so, opponent, why, why do you think there's a, a compression in this, in their model? Yeah, because when they're measuring the maximum. No, no, in their model, where is the convergence come from? Well, I don't, I don't know. But then why are you presenting a convergence in your mind? Because they have assumed that the nearest the maximum height there, right? And if there no, they say uh, maximum is uh, the maximum is smaller and larger, not the convergence. Well, if there's maximum height, then they can you they can test over theory, then there must be a or so you guess something, something like this. You guess this. So in our experiment that we did. So you are not presenting your result. You are supposed to present this result. Well, I don't quite understand how the theory okay, so happens. So maybe in a page, so in a page four. 
So uh, I think uh, if she, if in, in her work, I think she mentioned about the compression ratio there, but uh, I don't, don't know where in the theory they would uh, mention convergence. Some uh, your own opinion for later discussion. However, you fail actually to provide your own opinion in connection to your uh, later discussion. Uh, so, and, and secondly, so for the discussion, because uh, the, 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 so you uh, focus too uh, much time on, on the uh, final modeling uh, maximum height, but. Uh, does, doesn't uh, doesn't tell um, uh, lead uh, as uh, as Gang mentioned doesn't lead the discussion to let us know what about the uh, the model and what about the uh, experiment. That's a, a very big uh, a drawback from your uh, from, from your uh, discussion. And also for the uh, reviewer, so basically for uh, for the yeah. As mentioned, uh, as already mentioned, a little, a little bit superficial, especially I think on the uh, re, on the review of report. So uh, you spend a little bit more time on the uh, pros and cons. But in in, in this case, I, I I would like to hear more about uh, the uh, good points or bad points from their uh, theory or from their model or re, or, or uh, experimental results and so on. So better go into the uh, their reports more than the technical part. So that that will be my comments. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay then the 
as the end of this run.